Hey there! In this video, we'll talk about Entity Framework Core in the ABP Framework. This video is going to be divided into three sections. DB contexts, repositories, and migration. So when we're dealing with a bunch of modules, we should be able to create a different database for each one. And to do that, we're going to have to create a DB context for each module. And we should create an interface as well. And we're going to use the connection string attribute to resolve the DB context so we can tell which module corresponds to which database. And as a best practice, define the DB sets for aggregate roots rather than entities. Because as we said before, we're going to reach the entities through the aggregate roots. It is the aggregate roots responsibility to maintain the integrity of entities. And as a best practice, try not to use lazy loading because if other ORMs don't support it, it's going to fail. Always set table prefixes for each module so that tables don't get mixed up with each other. And when you're configuring your tables or entities, always use the configure by convention method. It auto configures for the base class properties. And also use extension methods for configuration. Putting all the fluent API configuration in extension methods is a best practice. By using the replace db context attribute, we can join the entities of different modules together. But we first need to implement the DB context interfaces of these modules. Otherwise, we won't be able to join them. If we wanted to query an existing module and combine it with our own entities, we'll need to implement the interface and replace the DB context as well. And if we wanted to host a module in a different database, we're going to need to create a new DB context for it and then implement its interface, replace its DB context, configure the entities, and add a new migration and remove the old module configuration and add a new migration to update the old one. And also add the new DB context. We'll see an example about this soon enough, but it's not going to be to that extent. Let's see this in action. I've got a brand new project with the application startup template right here, and we can check Entity Framework Core, and we'll find the DB context right here. As we've seen before, we have implemented the iTenant Management DB Context and the iIdentity Management DB Context interfaces. And then we've used the Replace DB Context right here for both of them. And by that, we can join them together. And we cannot join any of the others right here unless we do the same thing. And we've got some unit tests right here. To showcase how this works, We've injected the audit log repository, the tenant repository, and the identity repository has been already injected. This unit test is also default, is just checking whether the admin user is there or not. And this second unit test is expecting an invalid operation exception, since we're trying to join both the audit log queryable and the identity user queryable. And you might ask, why is it expecting an invalid operation exception? Because we haven't replaced the audit log db context right here. If we take a look at the next unit test, we're trying to join the queryable of the tenant repository and the identity user repository, which were both replaced DB context right here, right? So we can actually join them. And if we check the query right here, it should not be null. And yeah, they are passing. Now let us try to move the audit logging to a different database. We'll take it step by step. First, let's create the DB context in the Entity Framework Core folder in the Entity Framework Core project. And I'm going to call it second DB context. I'm going to make this public. And I'm going to derive the ABP DB context. of second db context and generate a constructor in the most important step we need to override the on model creating method I like to call this builder i'm going to use the connection string attribute right here and i'm going to call it second db context I'm going to get back to the previous DB context and I'm going to take the audit logging from here. And I'll paste it right here. 
Then I'm going to find the module class of the entity framework, and I'm going to find the configure method. But first, we need to add the PostgreSQL module to it. And the quickest way for that is going to the entity framework core folder. I'm going to open this into a terminal. And I'm going to paste in this command right here. ABP add package volo.abp.entityframeworkcore.postgresql. And it has been installed. You can take a look right here. If we check it out from here. And we can see it's been added right here. Now right here, second DB context, options goes to options dot use npg sql and this is for PostgreSQL. and let's not forget to add it to the dependency injection system and abp db context second db context and there is one last thing related to PostgreSQL itself we need to add this line to enable the legacy timestamp behavior just paste in this right here and you can read its documentation. I can also paste in the link right here. And so we've created and configured our DB context. Next up, we need to create a DB context factory for it. We're going to create it in the same folder. New class, second DB context factory. I'm going to make it public. <coughs> And I'm going to borrow it from here. Just going to copy all of this. I'm going to paste it right here. Second DB context. Second DB context. Second DB context right here. Second DB context. And the connection string. We're going to take it from here. And right here, it's not going to be use SQL Server. It's going to be use NPG SQL. And let's not forget implementing the audit logging DB context interface. I audit logging DB context. And also replacing the DB context of it. Type of I audit logging DB context. Let's implement the interface. And let's give it a get and set. And I'm going to navigate to the DB Migrator project, to the appsettings.json, and I'm going to add a connection string right here for my second DB context. I'm going to call it the same name second db context and the name of it is going to be audit for example i'm going to copy this connection string and i'm going to paste it in the appsettings.json of the web project as well and before running the db migrator we made sure that the web project is the startup project and the default project right here is the entity framework core project and we're going to paste in this command add migration of the name initial the output directory is going to be second db migrations and the context is going to be second db context all right it's working and let's also update the database context is the second db context now let's run the db migrator and we can see the sample app database right here from this connection string and by this connection string which is named audit we can find it right here with PostgreSQL And we can see the audit logging tables right here. And let us run the web project. Let us move around, do some things. Let's log out and then let's log in again. 
And now let's take a look. And now we can see our logs right here in PostgreSQL. And so we have successfully moved the DB context of the audit logging module to a whole new database and a whole new database management system. As for the repository section, the DB context interface resolves the repository interface, so our DB sets will be used automatically. ABP provides a cancellation token method that provides a value for the cancellation token even if you don't provide one. Define and include details extension method for each aggregate root, and always override the with details async method so you can get to choose the details that will be retrieved if the boolean is true. So how do we do this with the fcore repository? We'll take it step by step and let's take a look at the DB context interface, the I issue management DB context. As you can see from the document of entity framework core integration best practices, this is the DB context interface. It derives the IEF core DB context. We did add the connection string attributes and we can take a look and see the connection string name is issue management. We have added the DB sets of our aggregate roots only and we've only defined the get. We did not define the set. And next up is the issue management DB context, the DB context class. Here we do define the get and the set. It does derive the ABP DB context class of the T DB context, which is the class itself, and it implements the interface. And we've also added the connection string attributes. And if we check our extension method, we will find all of our entity framework core configuration. And like we said before, always set table prefixes, always use the configure by convention method, and all of this is being configured in one extension method. And we're going to create the interfaces of two custom repositories, the I customer repository and the I customer group repository. It'll derive the I basic repository interface of type customer and the GUID. And we've only got one method right here, which is the get count async. And it'll pass in these three, the customer group ID and the exclude customer ID, which are nullable, and the cancellation token, which is provided by the ABP framework on default. The iCustomer group repository, however, has this method, which is defined by code async. It'll also inherit from the same thing with these three parameters, the code, the include details, and the cancellation token. And it'll also derive the same interface. And these two methods will be used right here in the manager. As you can see, we've injected the customer repository in the customer group repository, and we've replaced the methods used in the previous video find by code async and the get count async. It's simpler and much more cleaner like that. And where are we going to implement it? In the data access layer, the entity framework core layer right here. We've created two custom repositories, the F core customer repository and the F core customer group repository. Now these two are custom repositories that will implement the interfaces that we've just created. The EF core customer repository will derive from the EF core repository of the interface of the DB context, the T entity, and the T key. It'll implement the customer repository interface, and this is the method that we've defined in the interface, the get count async. We are implementing it right here. It'll return the DB set where if the customer group ID is equal to the customer group ID of the customer. And same with the exclude customer ID as well and also the cancellation token provided by the ABP framework. And as we said, always override the with details async method. And the aggregate root we're using is the customer. And we have defined and include details extension methods right here in the issue management EF core queryable extensions class. Here is the I queryable include details method of type customer. And if the Boolean is true, we will return the contact information in the address which are entities under the customer aggregate root, right here. We'll do the same thing with the EF core customer group repository class. It'll derive the EF core repository of the interface of the DB context and the customer group aggregate root and the GUID. And it'll implement the interface. And this is the only method that we've defined in the interface. It's passing the code as string 
the boolean of the include details in the cancellation token and it'll return the code and the cancellation token with the get db set async method and let's test these two in our unit test project now after injecting the i customer repository that we've just created we can test the get count async method that we've defined it should return all the 13 customers that we've seeded so let's debug it and take a look and let's see the result is 13 which should be greater than zero. And as for the second one, we are using the get page list async method, which is coming from the repository itself. If we take a look back right here, it derives the iBasic repository, which derives from other repositories as well. And so this method is coming from there. If we take a look right here, it's coming from the iRead-only basic repository. And it'll return a paged list from zero to 10, grabbing the customer by its ID. The fourth parameter right here is the include details. If you see right here, one, two, three, and four. The fourth one is include details, which is false by default. But right here, we have set it to true. And if you remember right here, we have overridden the with details async in the include details extension method to include the contact information and the address. So we can define what details do you need when you set the boolean to true. So right here, when we say true, which details exactly do you mean? The contact information and the address, right? If we take a look at the seed contributor right here, these are the 13 customers that we have seeded before. In the for loop that generated 10 customers, we have added 10 contact information values and 10 addresses. And so let's take a look. I'm going to debug it. And the result is 10. We've got 10 counts. Let's take a look at one of them and we can see the contact information. We can also see the address. And let's take this one away. And let's, for example, also comment the overridden with details async method and see what happens. It is failing. Let's see. The count is still 10, but the contact information is null and the address is null. And this is the role of the with details async method. And it'll also throw an exception. And now we're done with most of our steps. The only step left is the migrations. If you remember right here in the Entity Framework core project, our DB context, we've used the connection string attribute right here. The connection string is issue management, right? I'm going to paste this. I'm going to take this away with me. And I'm going to find the host project so I can try something with. I'm going to find the app settings.json. I'm going to borrow this for a while. And I'm going to name this issue management. And I'm going to call this, for example, issue management new database, for example. After that, I'm going to open the HTTP API host in terminal. And I'm going to add the migration. .NET EF migrations add. Let's call it, for example, initial. I'm also going to update the database. Oh. And as you can see, it is right here with our three tables, the contact information, the customer groups, and the customers, which we've got from our DB sets right here. As you might have noticed, we have skipped the integration of the entities in the application startup template example. We also haven't removed the old module configuration and did not add a new migration to update the old one. You can check the documentation for that. And that was a brief introduction to how you can configure Entity Framework Core with the ABP framework. See you next time.